by now you should have asked yourself the question, why not use several t-tests instead of doing ANOVA? Now that's a good question. However, the problem is that by doing that, we would increase our chances of wrongfully rejecting the null. So let's say that there is a 95% chance, so there's a 95% chance of committing no type 1 error. Okay, so that there is a 95% chance of committing no type 1 error. And let's say that you do 5 t-tests. Okay, so you do 5 t-tests. Okay, 5 t-tests and a 95% chance of committing no type 1 error. So um, let's say that you do 5 t-tests and then the probability of making no type 1 error while doing these 5 t-tests would be equal to 0.95 raised to the power of 5. And that would be equal to 0.77. Or in other words, there is a 23% chance of committing a type 1 error while doing these five t-tests. Now that's way too much and we gotta get around that problem and we do that by doing the what we call plant contrast. So what you want to do is a or several plant contrasts. Contrast, plant contrasts. And the idea behind plant contrasts is fairly simple. Now, if we can't run multiple t-tests at the same time, um, why not just iterate through the different comparisons, step by step. So let's take a simple example from one of my previous videos on ANOVA. So above all, we have the variance that is explained by our factors or levels. So for example, we take a look at the different trading companies. So we have our trading companies here and we have the variance that is explained by knowing whether a trading company is either Dutch, Prussian or Swedish. So remember the example from the last from my last two videos we want to explain the differences and in the income of several trading companies and we do that by looking whether they are Dutch, Prussian or Swedish and we were able to explain well quite a lot of variation by well knowing their nationality right now we ran the end of it and we concluded that the means are in fact different great but what means are really different we only know that there's at least one mean that is different well we can't run multiple t-tests but we can compare two groups in every step and every step is a contrast so, for example, we might want to check whether Dutch or the income of Dutch trading companies differs from the income of Swedish and Prussian trading companies. So we have, let me get another color. So we have this run group over here that will be Swedish and Prussian trading companies. So, and we have our Dutch trading companies over here. Okay, so so we have our Swedish and Prussian group, and we have our Dutch um, trading group. Now we want to know whether their means are in fact different. Okay, and this what I've constructed right over here. This is actually my first const uh, um, uh, contrast. This is my first contrast. So contrast number one. Now, if you wanted to, um, you could have used uh, a different contrast. So for example, you could have checked whether Swedish traders differed from Prussian and Dutch traders. But the important thing is that you only compare two clusters. So one cluster over here is Swedish and Prussian traders and the other cluster is Dutch traders. And you do just, just want to know whether the mean of these two clusters uh, are different from each other. So this is what, what we want to check. Okay, nothing less, nothing more. Now after doing our first contrast, we could break up our, uh, our uh, cluster on the left over here because it consists of several levels. So we could say Okay, let's do another um, contrast. So that would be checking whether 
Swedish and Prussian trading companies differ. So are they the same or not? That would be a great question. Okay, and this would be our second contrast. So contrast number two. Because we sliced up this cluster over here. Okay, so we have our um, our levels over here. Now we slice them up and we compare two clusters. Then we slice this cluster up and compared um, Swedish and Prussian trading companies. Right. So this is our first contrast comparing whether Swedish and Prussian trading companies differ from Dutch trading companies, and then we check whether Swedish uh, trade companies differed from Prussian trade companies. Okay. Now. In theory, you could do as many contrasts as you want. However, your cluster design has path dependency. In contrast two, you must not compare Swedish and Dutch traders because Dutch traders were not in the parent cluster one contrast before. So we cannot compare Swedish and Dutch trading companies because there is no Dutch trading company in this cluster over here. So you have to slice um, your clusters, right? So you cannot comp So let me do that graphically. You must not insert Dutch trading companies into the second contrast. You're not allowed to do that. Okay, so you have to slice up your what or one cluster before. Okay, so this is very, very important. So now you see why it is so important to plan your contrast before actually doing it. Now, most of the time, we are interested in um, comparing a treatment group with a non-treatment group, so that our contrast, uh, or that one contrast, would be enough. Now, for example, in contrast one, the possible treatment could be access to the North Sea or whatever, because Sweden, Sweden, and Prussia. Well, depending on the on the um, time in in history, you you you're using your data from. Um, Sweden and Prussia don't have a no access to the North Sea, right? But Dutch traders have. Now, the, the, the treatment could be access to the North Sea. Okay, so uh, let's say we only want to do contrast one. In order to do this, we need to assign weights to the different variables. And the rules for this look somewhat weird, but in order to do these contrast correctly, we have to play by these rules. So we have two clusters. Okay, so we are doing cluster uh, contrast number one. Okay, let's say we're doing contrast number one. We want to compare the cluster of Swedish and Prussian traders to the cluster of Dutch traders. Now we have two clusters, and now we want to know whether there is a significant difference in the means between between the two clusters. Next, we give the the levels a clear ordering. So let me do that graphically, okay? So let me get some room over here. So we got to give them uh, a clear ordering. So let's say the ordering would be Swedish, Prussian, and Dutch. Okay, so let's say that we order our observation in this way. First Swedish, then Prussian, and then Dutch. Okay, so this is a clear um, ordering. Now remember that we have our first cluster, that will be Swedish and Prussian trading companies, and let's call it cluster C1, and we have our second cluster, let's call that cluster C2. Now, we have to give weights to every single level that there is, and in one group, um, there should only be negative weights, while in the other group there should only be positive weights. So let we have to give only positive weights in C1 and only negative weights in C2 or the other way around if you want to. But you have to know that in, cl in, in one cluster there have to be positive weights and in the other cluster there have to be negative weights. Now I know it sounds very complicated, but if you see an example, it's it's not that hard. And also, another rule says that the sum of all weights must be zero. So you have the weights in cluster one, and if you add the weights in cluster two, 
then this should end up, or you should end up with zero. Okay, so if you sum up the weights, they should be zero. Also, groups that are not represented in the contrast get a weight of zero. And the weights in uh, in one cluster must be equal to the number of observations in the op uh, opposing cluster. Okay, very complicated. So let's let's do an actual example and, and have a look at it. Okay, so how would that look like? Now, remember that we have cluster 1 and there is the level Swedish and the level Prussian. And we have cluster 2 with the level Dutch. So now we got to give weights to them. Now remember that in in one cluster you have to have positive weights and in, in the other cluster you have to have negative weights. So let's give positive weights in cluster 1 and negative weights in cluster 2. So the an, another um, rule says that they must sum up to 0. So let's do the following. Let's give Sweden uh, a weight of 1 and Prussia a weight of 1 and Dutch a weight of minus 2 because if you add up this you end up with 2 and if you add up this you end up with minus 2. Now if you add these weights together you end up with 0. Okay so this was very complicated I know but bear with me. So next we create a variable called contrast1. Okay, so let me make sure that you see this. So next we create a variable called contrast1. Contrast1. Okay, so we have created a variable and it contains the weights in the ordering we have chosen before. So the ordering was Swedish, Prussian and Dutch. So Remember that, where, where, have I, where is this? Right, there it is. So the ordering was Swedish, Prussian, Dutch. Okay, very important. Keep in mind the ordering. Now, if we create a variable, the, the contrast one variable, we got to assign weights to it. So it has three values. The first value is to wait for Sweden or Swedish traders. That would be one. The second one would be the weight for Prussian traders, that would also be one. And the third value would be the weight for Dutch trading uh, companies, and that would be minus two. So these are the um, weights for our first contrast. Now if you want to do the second contrast as well, what weights would you use? Well, let's get some room over there. So we have cluster one and cluster 2 again and inside these uh, clusters we are comparing Swedish to Prussian trading companies. Okay, So these are the levels in our clusters. Now what weights would you use? Well, remember that levels that are not in our contrast get a weighting of zero, right? So what weighting is not in our in our um, contrast? Well, that would be Dutch. So what weights would you assign? Well, I would give or remember that this has to be positive and this has to be negative or the other way around. So I would say, well, let's give Sweden uh, a, a weight of 1 and let's give Prussian traders a weight of minus 1 because in the end what will be the sum of it? Well that would be 0. Now we also have to give Dutch trading companies a weight. However they are not in our contrast so the weight would be equal to 0. So we would create a new variable called contrast2 And the value, or uh, the weights, sorry, would be equal to 1 for Swedish, minus 1 for Prussia, and 0 for Dutch trading companies. Because Dutch trading companies are not in our contrast. Now, using these weights, we would go into R and do our planned contrast. Now, this was very, very complicated. Uh, so, just make sure that you, well, first of all, watch the previous videos.
And also make sure that you watch my next video where we do actually do the contrasts in R, okay?